Hey everybody, this is Brad from Johnson Small Engines, better known as the One Handy Mechanic. If I can do it, you can too. Today I have here a Cub Cadet SLX50 XT2. I'm pretty sure it has a blown head gasket. And I'm going to go ahead and show you the engine we're working on. This is a Kohler 7000 series. This is a 24 horse. This is a KT735. And I'm pretty sure it has a blown head gasket. We're going to get into it together. If you hear this sound when you're turning the engine off, most likely you either have a blown head gasket or a blown exhaust gasket. We'll go ahead and fire it up and then we're gonna shut it down and upon shutdown, you're gonna hear like a swishing sound at the end. Okay, right at the end, that swishing sound. Sounds like a, a leak right at the end. We'll do it one more time. Okay, so you probably heard that swishing sound at the end. We're gonna go ahead and start disassembling this and we're gonna get into the head. Okay, so this is gonna be my first time getting under one of these guys. Um, air filter, not good. So we definitely wanna keep an air filter clean. Everybody's gonna ask, why do you have a blown head gasket? I do know that Kohler's were known for blown head gaskets to a degree, but not that bad. I actually like these engines. So I was kind of disappointed to hear that noise. Now I'm gonna check the oil. And as you can see, the oil's down the bottom dot and it's very black. So this has a lot of wear on it. That's not good. Again, it's very low on the dipstick there. And it could have maybe run low on oil, but okay, so the air cleaner's off. The reason why I took the air cleaner off is because we have a 10 millimeter bolt right here. And there's a couple over here. There's one here and there's one over here. We're gonna take them off. And then we're gonna go around the outside of this and start taking off the bolts. So we have an eight millimeter socket here and we have one back here and we have a few on the other side. So we're gonna get taking these off. Okay, they were eight millimeter sockets. We have a few on this side. That one there and I also if you look real closely underneath I'm not sure if you can see this but underneath there's actually you don't have to take the bolt all the way out you can just just take the bolt out halfway and then it should slide above that so we'll go ahead and do it all the way around now that should okay so we got it loose we have to take off the fuel pump which is right here, 10 millimeter socket. And these screws are made to go in plastic. That's why the threads look so weird. So you have to be really careful putting these back. I'm not gonna use the electric ratchet when I tighten down them. Now I'm just gonna move this off to the side to see if we can leave it like this. And we should be able to pull this whole assembly up and off. That's pretty nice. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna have to take the valve cover off, pull the spark plug wire here. I want to go ahead and take this emissions line off so it's a little bit easier to work with. Okay, there's a plastic nipple in there that this goes into. You just got to be very careful when you take this off so you don't break that nipple. And I just used my clip tool remover and it just popped it down like that and it came right off. And I'm going to just pull this out of the way. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this engine up in the air a little bit so we can work on it a little bit easier. Okay, so I put it up in the air so you guys will be able to see a little bit better and I can actually see better. And it helps actually have the oil from the valve cover leak back down into the engine so it doesn't make a mess, hopefully. Uh, I also put a piece of uh, paper towel inside the throat of the carburetor throat so you don't get dirt in here. I'm gonna take this throttle cable off next. And what I normally do is I'll take a black magic marker and I'll mark where it's sitting on the bracket so when you put it back on, it's not so hard to figure out where it goes. At least it's going to be in a general right vicinity. And then you're going to have to adjust the cable accordingly when you get it all back together again. And you don't have to take this all the way out either. It'll just pop out. And then this is an L bracket. There's an L bend in here. So you're going to have to go like a 90 degrees to get that out like that. And then also... You can see the wear mark at this hole. It's a good idea to just go ahead and put another black line, just so you know where it goes back in there. 
All right, so now I'm gonna take off the exhaust. The exhaust nuts are 13 millimeter. And they actually gave us room to get this out. Now, I can see we're having a problem with the muffler. I thought it might just drop down and out. And because the muffler is tight to the frame, it is not just gonna drop down. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take off this cover here. There's one underneath in your muffler. And then we have one over here. Okay, so that just comes right out. And we got a little bit of, looks like there might have been one time that could be mice. That could be, it looks like a feather, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna leave the spark plug in. The intake is gonna have to come off. I'm gonna go ahead and try to just lift up on both sides. So that means I gotta take off this eight millimeter one here. So the other side here. And we'll see how this is connected. Okay, so the carburetor is also connected. It's loose, but it's not that loose because the carburetor is connected over here by this bracket right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this bolt out here. And see if it'll come up. Okay, so now it'll pop up out of the way here. We need to get the bolts out. I just wanna, this is the first time I'm doing this, so we're just being gentle with everything. I don't wanna mess anything up. All right, so. We're loose there, we got the exhaust off. Well, the exhaust isn't quite off. So now I'm gonna go down to this bracket here, the throttle bracket is connected to the head, so that's gonna come off. 10 millimeter wrench. I'm gonna put a little PB blaster in there. I don't like the way it's coming out. A little lube, see if it'll make it a little bit easier coming out. Now it feels a little better, but that was really, really tight coming out. We have to take the valve cover off. Okay, to take the valve cover off. It's a T30 Torx. Now these valve covers no longer use gaskets. Or I should say the companies, the Kohler and Briggs, have gotten away from, have gotten away from using gaskets. I really don't like it. It really creates havoc for trying to get these things off. And, uh, I'm gonna to try to get it off without ruining the, the valve cover, but I would assume that you should probably purchase a valve cover just in case you bend it, because if you bend the valve cover, you're gonna to have to replace it. You may not get it straight. This is what I use, this is just a scraper. If you can get a scraper up inside here and then just push it in. I've already seemed like I've, I've gotten some penetration there, so that's good. Looks like I might be able to pop this off, maybe. I wanna get a small hammer. Well, that wasn't that bad. All right, I didn't realize there was gonna be so much oil up in here. I thought it would drain back, but it has not. Make sure you have plenty of rags underneath it when you do it, especially if you're doing it on the ground. And it looks like, if you can see right here, see how brown it is right here? And look up here where it's not brown and down here it's brown, that's heat. So that's telling me right there that this end, this, this side of this motor right here got very hot. You have to take the valves out. What I normally do is I'll take the spark plug out and I'll put it up the top dead center on this side. So I know my valves will be shut. Take the spark plug out. Spark plug doesn't look that bad of condition. I'm gonna use a zip tie. What you wanna do is you're trying to get this piston to come up the top dead center. And it's gonna be, I'm gonna take the other spark plug out to make it a little bit easier for me. I'm taking this side out just to relieve all the compression so I can spin over the engine better. Okay, I'm gonna to try to find a piston, locate the piston, and then turn the flywheel. 
All right, so that was up, going down. We're coming up. And right now we're just about top dead because you can tell that the magnets are right real close to the magneto right here. And you should be, when you have, when your valves, when your valve rockers are loose, we have valve clearance right there. You should be on top dead center. When your magnet is over, it should be about a quarter turn past this, but this is about right for top dead center. And all I'm trying to do is just re alleviate any kind of stress on these. And when we put them back together again, it'll be nice and easy. Now there's adjustments. There's, you have an exhaust gap right here. Okay, that's, uh, I think on this one, it's, I think it's, 40 or actually it's four thousands to six thousands. I'm gonna I'm gonna have them at five and over here This one is also four to six. I'm pretty sure uh, So we're gonna go ahead and take these out and go ahead and loosen this one up Loosen this one up When you take this off, this is your intake rocker arm and this is the intake push rod and you want to keep everything exactly the way you got it so I'm gonna take this over to the bench. And again, I'm gonna take this out and put it on the bench. All right, so now we're down to head bolt here, head bolt here, head bolt here, and head bolt there. Um, I'm gonna say that's 13 millimeter. Go ahead and loosen this up. Tight. Gonna go ahead and break it loose with 13. Wow, that was tight. Right here. And it was tight, so if we have a blown head gasket, it was definitely not due to loose bolts. Go ahead and All these head bolts are the same size, so you don't have to worry about that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tap on this head a little bit to see if it'll uh, pop. Okay, I just felt it. So now the hard part is taking the head off with this exhaust on without taking all this apart. So I'm gonna pull up on the intake a little bit. Now we do have a wire right here that we can actually, this is your, this is your cutoff for your ignition coil. We're gonna, I'm gonna pull that off and then it gives us a little bit more room to pull this up because what I'm gonna try to do is pull the head up and out of the exhaust. Okay, we're attached over here. Okay, so we need to take this cover off See if we can try to bring this out of the exhaust. All right, we're still the shield. We're gonna, we're gonna bend that out of the way a little bit, not too much. Okay, now you can see right off the bat, it is blown. It's a blown head gasket, and that was that noise. So what it is, I can show you here. This right here, all that dark color is right here. This is the blown head gasket right here on the head. You can see where it was blown right through there. And you can see how hot it was right here. Now, if I take the head gasket off, if it comes off in one piece, it may or may not. Now, I don't want to really get anything down the nose. I'm going to go ahead and stick a couple rags right here. Okay, so I want to take a small razor blade here and see if I can get this to come off in one piece so I can show you guys. This reminds me of the, <laughs> of the Briggs blowing head gaskets, but they blew head gaskets here, not here. This was heat right at the exhaust. I'm not sure if, uh, if there's an issue with this or not. I almost think he might have ran it low on oil. And we have to make sure we clean this up really well before we put the new gasket on here. All right, it didn't quite come off, but this is what I wanted to show you right here. You can see where it was, it's very hard to tell, but you can see right there, I'm not sure if the camera's even gonna pick it up or not, but right there, there's a line right through there. And it was definitely blowing down and through right here. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this 
all the rest of this off. We're gonna clean this up real good. Blown head gasket, absolutely 100%. And uh, I'm thinking maybe it was due to, to low oil at, at some point. But now we're gonna have to get all this carbon off, clean up the head, head real well, check it for straightness, make sure it's straight before we put the, uh, the new head gasket on. And if the head is warped, then I would replace the head. Um, you can go ahead while you're in here and also relap the valves in if you want to go that far. Uh, these may or may not need it. I'm going to go ahead and take them and look at them and uh, we'll go from there. But I'm going to go ahead and clean everything up and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're coming for a close look at the engine. I have a flashlight on here. This is all cleaned up. Uh, you want to make sure that you also blow out these holes where your studs go into and clean off your bolts. Okay, so I'm going to put the head gasket on and as they said in the instructions, you want the head gasket to on with the numbers out. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna try to put this, I'm gonna put the exhaust on and we'll see how it fits down inside here. And then we're gonna line up dowel pins. All right, let me just show you this. I should have showed you this first. There is two dowels right here. These dowels that sit inside the head, one there and one there. So when the head, when it sits down on top of there, it's gonna line up, line itself up just right. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Now it's that's sitting right down on there. I'm gonna put the other nut on for the exhaust. And there is the nut on the one side. Oops, nope, there wasn't the nut, all right. Thought I had the nut on the other side. Put this nut on here. Make sure your gasket's on there. Not gonna tighten it up 100% yet. I'm just getting them hand tight. Now we have to put the head bolts in. Now the head bolts I clean. Okay, so I snug these down by hand. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and do their crisscross pattern. We're gonna do start here. We're gonna do 16 foot pounds. And then cross it over. 16. Over here. And this is a two step process. So we're gonna go from 16 to 30. Okay, again, we start down at the corner, move 30. Cross it over, 30. Oop, over here. <laughs> and four here. Okay, so that's torqued. And I would definitely check your studs, your rocker studs, just to make sure they're tight. I have seen these vibrate out. We're gonna go ahead and button all this up here. And there are torques for these also. Now before we tighten these up and torque these to the right specs, I'm only gonna go one, make, to make sure you reconnect your, this is the kill on your, Oil for this side. I'm gonna go over to the other side. Go ahead and put this side in. Snug them up and then I'll get the torque wrench on them. Okay, so they want you to do 66 inch pounds and then they want you to do 88. Okay, they're torque and take the torque. Now the exhaust, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that up. Finished tightening up the exhaust. Now we're gonna put these two. These are the ones that were a little bit tight on the way out. These are a little tricky to get to. You have two pieces of metal under there. You have this cover here and this cover here. Well, this bracket and then there's a cover. So make sure you get them both in there. The other one's right here. 
And we also had to mount the bracket for, for the, the carburetor right here. I like to get everything started on a lot of the bolts before I tighten them up. Okay, those are tight. Got an extension. Just want to make sure this was nice and snug. All right, we're good there. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put this shield on. And you can put your spark plug now. You can put it on now or later. This goes behind that bracket right there. And then it goes underneath here. And there's one on the bottom. Underneath the muffler here. Kind of have to feel your way around for the hole in this one. Now I'm trying to pry away, like you can see right here where there was some silicone from the last head, from the last valve cover going on. I'm gonna just pull this away a little bit and hold it back while I'm tightening up this bolt. So it has a gap. I don't wanna get the valve cover, <clears throat> I don't wanna do, want get this interfering with the valve cover is what I was trying to say. And then these guys here. Okay, that's tight. We'll go ahead and uh, put the rocker arms on. Exhaust, push rod, and then you have to kind of look down the hole there, and there is a round cup that this will go into. You might be able to see down in there, or not. Mm -hmm. So just sitting in, a, it's gotta be sitting in a little cup, just like it is, all right? And then you have to make sure that you did not interfere with your top dead center. I know as a fact where the magnets are right here as opposed to the coil that we're at top dead center and you can go ahead and also stick an object, stick your own zip tie down in there just to make sure you're all the way up. And you have to be on the compression stroke that we were on so the rockers are gonna be loose. Or when you put this on your rocker arm and you can't, you can't mess that up. You have a little divot there and a flat spot here. The divot goes over the rod and the flat spot goes on your bow. And then you just have to make sure that if this falls apart, which it will, you have it like this. It's kind of like a puzzle, but you can see how it's shaped and how it works. So it's just gonna fit just like that. Then you're gonna fit it all down right there, like so. And there is a Torx screw in there. It's a 25 Torx, number 25. Screw the the nut down the stud, that is your adjuster right there. And we're gonna adjust these to the spec in the book. You tighten that down, then you tighten up, you tighten your torques down, and then you tighten up this nut. And that'll, you wanna make sure you have enough play so we can turn the motor over with both of the rocker arms. Intake's gonna go in. Make sure your intake is right where it should be on the cone. That's your tap it down there. Rocker arm goes over just the same as the exhaust. Okay, that's very snug hand tight and it's loose. This is very snug hand tight and it's loose. And now we can go ahead and spin the engine over just to make sure that everything is operating as it should. So this is a position that we want these in to adjust them. So what I'm doing now is I'm just gonna rotate the engine, spark plugs are still out, I'm gonna put my zip tie in the head and it's gonna be right at top dead center. Okay, now it's gonna go down. I'm gonna come back up. Now we're at top dead again. We're gonna go down one more time. Everything is operating as it should. Back up. And we're at top dead center right now, back to where we were. Now we can go ahead and adjust these. I wanna go ahead and adjust these to the right specs and I'll be right back. Okay, so I adjusted the valves to the specs 
I'm gonna go ahead and put the valve cover on, the clean valve cover off, and then put some silicone sealant on it, high temperature. And this are, these are 30, it's a T30 that screws these in. And go to the torque spec. Pretty sure it's like, I think it's 80 inch pounds. And if you have any questions on this cover being bent, then just go ahead and buy another one, put one on. I think we got it off pretty well with the scraper. That was a good, good idea using a scraper going in there, a very thin scraper. 85 inch pounds on the valve cover. While we're here, I'm going to go ahead and put the rattle cable back on. And because of our lines, it makes it real easy to line them up. Everything lines up and all you have to do is you didn't take the bolts all the way out so you can just slide it, the cover right down on the bolts and then tighten them up. Now your spark plug wire, it does have a little crevice right here. So it does go up inside there and just it lays perfectly on this shroud right there. The two large screws for your fuel pump, they go into plastic and you have to be very careful. I start them and then I use a 10 millimeter, it's a 10 millimeter socket for these, but I'll use a uh, quarter inch ratchet. Okay, so just do this by hand and snug them up. That's all you need to do. They'll go in very quickly. And if you're using electric ratchet, you can Mess them up very fast. Nice and easy. Snug them up. Then you have the three up top here. And here. And here. And here. And then again, I just want to use my ratchet because I don't want to go too tight on these. Emissions line to put back on, just right here. It goes up into this plastic piece, and you can see it now. I have the, you can see the plastic dipple right there. That's where this goes right here. Just push, push it up in there. That's good. I'm gonna go ahead and put this down on the ground. Okay, so we cleaned around here. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and take this out. So it was nice and clean down there. We're gonna put a new air filter on for him. And put his cover on. Make sure that your arms are out on these because if you look at how they clip on, you gotta, it's, it's like a puzzle. And right here. So when these are all the way opened, like the wings are open, the wings are up, up that'll make it sit perfectly down here and they lock it in, like so. I did know his oil was a little bit on the low side. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, top his oil off real quick. Okay, everything should be buttoned up. Okay, so as you heard, there 
there was no whooshing sound at the end of that, which means that we did fix the blown head gasket. I'm gonna take this outside and uh, do a couple heat cycles on it. If you guys have any questions or comments about this video, please leave them below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe, tell your friends about my channel, and I will catch you guys on the next one.